Well, good morning, everyone, wherever and whenever you are. We, we hope, we tested, we think we have fixed the audio problem. <laughs> it was a Zoom issue. Original audio for musicians is the option that must be checked. And when you start a meeting, it defaults to off, but it's on at the moment. So any given week, all of you, I'm looking at you, camera people, if you can't hear the music, put in the chat, check the options, because it might have, I might have forgotten to click it. But, uh, but it should work today, and we should be back on track. And I'm glad that we're all gathered here on either on this land that we honor as having been stewarded for generations by the Wabanaki people. We, we honor this land and those people, hopefully by our stewardship of this land. And if you are coming to us from uh, the, the internet, we hope that you are finding here the safe space that we intend to create, a space that welcomes you no matter how you express yourself, no matter who you love, just as you are, you come to us and we are here together to seek the spirit of our God in this time and in this space. And we begin the worship uh, the last few weeks in this series, I've been having us hear those words of the words of gratitude, the words before all else that is the practice of native peoples to, to gather with gratitude before anything important happens. And so we're hearing that every week in Mohawk. And I'm sure that many of you don't speak that. <laughs> so the English is on the screen. But what happens is we give gratitude for each of the different uh, elements of creation. And then the response of the people is, uh, and so are my, and we are, I'm trying to remember how, how does it go, it, and 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 now we are, and now our mind, and now our minds are one. That's that, those are the words. And so when that's on the screen, feel free to respond with that. Make that a litany. That that's that's appropriate to do that. And this is not cultural appropriation because these peoples have said they want all people to be this gra grateful to understand this process. And so we uh, we willingly partake in that and hopefully it will help ground us each week as we go through this series. Now of course we do ground ourselves in particular this congregation with the words of our mission statement because it is naming who we are and what we choose to be in this world. So let us begin now with reciting together our mission statement. Seeking to walk in the way of Jesus, we are an open and affirming church, faithfully using who we are and what we have to serve those on the margins of our community. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And I encourage you all now to welcome one another here with signs of welcome and of peace. And uh, if you can get in front of the camera, don't forget to greet them. <laughs>
Se wara hun zio, scot negari wessa dan o dee tine horado, ne aguego gossat stran sorawana sa oyera. Aguego onska ante de wakwa iuni ne ingwat nigura dan o dee tine horado, ne ingwat sun an, tuka di naiota ne ingwat nigura. Aguego onska ante de wakwa iuni ne ingwat nigura dan o dee tine horado, ne ye tine stanha o hunja. Gadi nayota ne ingwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ingwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado. Tika ne garunyo. Gadi nayota ne ingwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ingwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado. Ne gondrok sun an. Gadi nayota ne ingwa ni gura. Agwego anska andi de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne ohdera sun an. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska andi de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne ohonde sun an. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska andi de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne odi nu ma sun an. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne ga hip sun an. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne o nunkwa sun an. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne jun hekwa. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne gondirio. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne garunga sun an dano overe sun an. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne oji dan ogu an. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne gaieri ni gawarage. E tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne eti sa togo radi weras. E tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti dawat nu horado ne eti dawat di a joganeka garakwa. E tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne eti sota a sontaneka garakwa. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti nu horado ne eti strakwa runyo. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Agwego anska ante de wakwe nuni ne ungwa ni gura dano de eti dawat nu horado ne eti ngwa ya di izu. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Ona tof ni ore, wakaderi wat kweni, doga o tena zungat ni gorha, izagit ne aiza wata sundurun. Tuka di nayota ne ungwa ni gura. Tok ni ga wanage.
sheaf of sweet grass, bound at the end and divided into thirds, is ready to braid. In braiding sweet grass, so that it is smooth, glossy, and worthy of the gift, a certain amount of tension is needed. Of course, you can't do it yourself by tying one end to a chair or by holding it in your teeth and braiding backward away from yourself. But the sweetest way is to have someone else hold the end so that you can pull gently against each other, all the while leaning in, head to head, chatting and laughing, watching each other's hands one holding steady while the other shifts the slim bundles over one another, each in its turn. Linked by sweet grass, there is reciprocity between you. Linked by sweet grass, the holder as vital as the braider. This will be our metaphor. Braiding sweet grass is an intertwining of science, spirit, and story, old stories and new ones that can be medicine for our broken relationship with Earth, a pharmacopoeia of healing stories that allow us to imagine a different relationship in which people and land are good medicine for each other. Will you hold the end of the bundle while I braid, hands joined by grass? Can we bend our heads together and make a braid to honor the earth? And then I'll hold it for you while you braid too. When Nana Bozo, the Anishinaabe original man, our teacher, part man, part Manido, walked through the world, he took note of who was flourishing and who was not, of who was mindful of the original instructions and who was not. He was dismayed when he came upon villages where the gardens were not being tended, where the fishnets were not repaired, and the children were not being taught the way to live. Instead of seeing piles of firewood and caches of corn, he found the people lying beneath maple trees with their mouths wide open, catching the thick, sweet syrup of the generous trees. They had become lazy and took for granted the gifts of the Creator. They did not do their ceremonies or care for one another. He knew his responsibility, so he went to the river and dipped up many buckets of water. He poured the water straight into the maple trees to dilute the syrup. Today, maple sap flows like a stream of water with only a trace of sweetness to remind the people both of possibility and of responsibility. And so it is that it takes 40 gallons of sap to make a gallon of syrup.
Master's love and fork. Hands and feet and Our scripture reading this morning is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 through 19, First Nations Version. The giver of life has set us free from the dark ruler of this world. He has brought us safely onto, this good, onto his good road to walk it together with Creator's much-loved Son. He is the one who paid a great price to release us from our bad hearts and broken ways. He is the visible representation of our invisible creator all that the father has belongs to his son to this son he existed before creation and is above all created things for it was in him that all things in the spirit world above and on the earth below were created all things seen and unseen yes even governments rulers powers and authorities were all created by him and for him here ends this morning's reading. Mercy, mercy me Things in what they used to be No, no Where did all the blue skies go? Poison is the wind that blows from the north, south, and east Mercy, mercy me All oh, things in what they used to be No, no Oil wasted on the ocean and upon our seas Fish full of mercury Mercy, mercy me Things ain't what they used to be, no, no Radiation underground and in the sky 
Animals and birds who live nearby are dying Mercy, mercy me Things in what they used to be, no, no What about this overcrowded land? How much more abuse from man can she stand? The year before I was born, the Pittsburgh Pirates won the World Series. I grew up in Pennsylvania, so I grew up a Pirates fan. And uh, move a little closer. And uh, they didn't do a whole lot of winning when I was a kid, but I was loyal and faithful because that's what you do, right? It paid off because in 1971 they won the World Series. And it was a little choppy for a few years, but the wait was only eight years until they won it again. And then I moved. And I moved to the land of the curse before it was reversed. I learned what it was like to, uh, to wait. I hadn't waited nearly as long as, uh, as folks here had, right? <laughs> but during that time, too, I then had to decide who was I going to cheer for? It was an American League city. Having been a fan of the National League, I wasn't able really to follow the Pirates all that much. This was not in the day of streaming and uh, you know, pay-per-view. So I was losing connection with my allegiance of my youth, and I was uh, losing interest in baseball too. I kind of like what's happening now. I mean, it's it doesn't take you a day and a half to watch a game. So, you know, maybe I'll get back into it. I don't know. But, uh, but I did become a cultural Red Sox fan because, you know, you got to have the hat. You know, you, you got you to gotta know the sit-go sign and all that. You know, you got to go sit in the bleachers at Fenway, which I did. And, uh, you know, so it was like I was part of, of the, the tribe, I would say. But, you know, having moved to Cleveland – that's where there was a tribe anyway. But that's a different story. But I realized that, that my allegiance could switch, that my original allegiance really was about family. It was about my, my love of my grandmother because we would listen to the games together. We would watch the games together. Um, I was surrounded by Pirates fans growing up, so it was, it was about the, the, the group, the, the community. And so that was what I was able to switch because I was in a new community, which I did want to embrace. I wanted to become a New Englander. I know I'm from away, but I tried, you know. I'm doing my best to be a part of this. And then 1994, the World Cup rolled around. And all of a sudden, I was introduced to the beauty of the beautiful game of soccer. And I was hooked. I, I, I became an addict. There was no doubt about it. And so when the New England Revolution started in 1996, I was a fan before they kicked the ball. Right? I was ready. And I've been going to matches at Foxborough, probably about half the home games for most of the time that I could get there. And, and I have learned about the new curse. I don't know what the curse is, but we are cursed. Uh, we are the Buffalo Bills of the, of the Major League Soccer, having been to the final five times and not won it yet. Um, the worst, of course, was when I was there and watched Kobe Jones score in front of me and take the cup home to Los Angeles. But um, in any case, I'm not bitter. Yes, I am. But, <laughs> but that allegiance was tested when I moved again to Ohio. And there, I had the opportunity, but not much of one, to be a Columbus Crew fan, which I could never stomach the idea of being, right? It's not my team. 
Wait, I'm, I'm a hardcore fan. I go down there and I lose my voice. You're, you all can be grateful that I don't go to Saturday games and get home at 2 in the morning with no voice. Or maybe you wish I would some Sundays. I don't know. But, but that's what I would be doing. So I don't get to as many matches now because of that. But, but in the fort, which is what we call us crazies behind the, the North Goal, uh, one, of the, one of the chants that we sing is New England Till I Die. New England till I die. I know I am. I'm sure I am. New England till I die. And, uh, and yes, I know I'm from away, but I am New England till I die. And so in, in Columbus, I would go just to see my team play. <laughs> and there we go. I got to see them beat Columbus and move on to the finals of the MLS Cup, which they, of course, lost. But that was 10 years ago, and we're still waiting. So I know about allegiance and loyalty. And I know that we can have multiple allegiances. And I know that our allegiances can change. Because I'm still sort of a Pirates fan and sort of a Red Sox fan because it sort of doesn't matter. But, you know, I'm not a Yankees fan. I'm not, I, I understand there are rules here, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, and when it comes to the New England Revolution, I will never be swayed. You know, I, I, will, I will be a Revolution fan until the day I die when, when I hope, of course, that there will be six Revolution players as my pole bearer so they can let me down one last time. But <laughs> it was all a setup for that joke. Are you glad you waited? <laughs> yeah, no. The truth is, allegiances really are a, a matter of priority because we do have multiple allegiances. And some are more central, some are more important than others. And sometimes they come into conflict and we have to make decisions about what allegiance, what loyalty will win the day for us. The Pledge of Allegiance, I think, is one of those challenges. If you think about it, it's a lesser allegiance than what we're truly called to. Now, that sounds like sacrilege, doesn't it, because of how patriots will say, no, it is, you have to love this flag. You realize we're one of the very few nations, maybe the only one, that, that has such a high regard for its flag. And of course, we're so hypocritical because look how we treat it. <laughs> but, uh, but people will get all upset if you don't respect it. You don't sing the national anthem, you kneel, or, or you, you show some, some sign of protest during it because we, we pledge allegiance to a flag Oh, and to the republic for which it stands. I mean, just think, just pull that apart for a minute. The, the challenge of that allegiance is that you are going to place these things above other allegiances, other loyalties that clearly are more important. Your family, your community. Don't, aren't all of us really more committed to our communities, those who are around us, more than those who are far away in other states and in, in the nation? So the Pledge of Allegiance is a way to try to bring us into an understanding that this is a valuable allegiance that should bump up on the priority list, especially when it's challenged. But what should our ultimate and primary allegiance be? What, what should we be committed to before all else? What would, what would trump an allegiance to a flag or even an allegiance to the republic for which it stands? Do those things exist for us? I would argue that an allegiance to the peace of all of humanity, uh, an allegiance to the care of all of creation is a more primary, more important allegiance than the one to the nation. Not that we shouldn't have it, but that it's more like concentric circles. How wide can you, can you extend your loyalty, your devotion? How far can your attention and care go? And frankly, that's a spiritual message. That's a message that we hear challenged, hear ourselves challenged about in Scripture regularly. Love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, and love even your enemy. If we're going to take seriously our loyalty and devotion to the teaching of our faith and to Christ who taught us, then we need to love our enemy. It's kind of hard to have an exclusive loyalty and allegiance to your own nation and still love your enemy, isn't it? You can see why Jesus got in trouble with the authorities of his day because he's challenging us to do something that is difficult and hard and runs counter to what others would have us do. 
the scripture we read today reminds us that all governments and leaders are vying for this allegiance of, of us, but they exist only because there is a greater power. They were created by Christ for Christ. They were created by God, and God's representative on earth understands that these are all lesser than our allegiance and our love of God. And the early Christians understood that sometimes being a good Christian meant being a bad Roman. That sometimes you have to do something that isn't the expectation or even allowed by the authorities and rulers around you because love is a higher calling. And when evil surrounds you, you have to stand up for love. And it's a message that we should take to heart today. Where are the challenges for us to be good Christians in a nation that isn't always Christ-like. The truest measure of allegiance is in the fruit. How do you spend your time, your talent, your treasure? If people look at you and measure you by the activities of your life, where will they say your allegiance lies? What are the things that you spend your time doing? Obviously, some people's allegiance is to making as much money as they can. <laughs> some people's allegiance is to making sure that their people and the people like them are the ones who are protected. And then there should be those of us who are known by the love that we show. We challenge ourselves weekly with the words of our mission statement. And the question is, when we say that we will use who we are and what we have to serve those who have been marginalized, is it simply an aspirational pledge? We aspire to do those things? It should be at least that. But if we aren't doing that in practice, then how will anyone know that we mean it? Is our allegiance really there? There's a reason why we pledge that every time we gather. It's important for us to remind ourselves that this is who we say we are so that we will act that way so people will say, yes, that is how you are. And I believe that we do. And I believe that we make the effort. And I believe there's always more to do. And that's why we gather each week to be encouraged to do more. Because the gifts of God are not just bestowed upon us by some magical blessing so that we can be like the people in the story today lying under maple trees drinking maple syrup. Now that would be a nice life, wouldn't it? Maybe that's what we should be praying for, that, that, that God fixes that problem with the maple trees and makes the syrup flow instead of that sap that you have to boil down. But the point of that indigenous story is true for us as well, that the gifts of creation, the gifts of God, the gifts of community are all given to us for us to do something with. That there's a part of this that involves our ritual and responsibility, our practices. That's what makes the gifts truly good. We, we use them. The, the stories themselves, if we get caught up in the stories as literal and don't make meaning from them, we're not doing the work that we're supposed to do with the gift that we're given. The work is to make meaning. And when you have meaning in your life, when you understand the message that's been given to you, then you understand that challenge because loving your neighbor is a challenge. And loving your neighbor is a challenge that is not limited. Another bit of the wisdom of indigenous peoples is that when they make decisions, they consider the implications to the seventh generation. One of your neighbors is the seventh generation that has not yet been born. You must love that one as well. So our vision needs to be longer and wider and broader. Our passion needs to be expansive. The lesson is right there in the maple trees. Not only is the work of making syrup hard because it takes time and effort and doesn't happen immediately and the, and the product, as wonderful as it is, is small, <laughs> which makes it more valuable. But also, 
if you plant a maple tree today, you are not going to have syrup next season or the season after or the season after. <laughs> um, the gift of a maple tree planted today is a gift to the seventh generation. It is loving your neighbor who you cannot see and you may not ever see. That's truly the love that we're called to. That's truly the allegiance that is primary for us to the creation and most especially to the creator. Amen. Let us come before the creator, the one who loves us beyond our wildest imagination and offer to God our prayers. We will begin as we do most weeks with those who are online. If you have a joy or concern to share, please uh, unmute yourself and share that now. I got as far as Sydney exit this morning and turned around and came home. So I offer prayers of thanks for a safe return home. Hi, this is Megan. Um, Connor and I are going to be driving to Portland today to pick up my daughter from the airport. I was just asking for prayers for safe travels. This is our prayer. How about here in the room? We'll bring you the microphone if you raise your hand. <laughs> you have your own microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's okay. You can use this I'm one. just helping you get your cardio. Okay. Um, just prayers for my home state of Vermont, and particularly my um, hometown, which um, got it really bad. Everything's destroyed there, and everybody, all my friends, and are suffering a lot. So anyway, keep them in your thoughts from all the flooding. If you didn't know, I'm. <laughs> Well, let us take these prayers that we have heard. And if you uh, have a prayer that you want to make sure is included in our weekly email, please put that in writing, leave it with me. You can put it in chat if you're online. But let us be silent and still before our loving creator so that our hearts may be open, that we might expose those things we keep private to God, who knows them already, and hear God's voice speaking to us the challenge of response, for God is responding already. And oftentimes that response involves our commitment. So let us pray. Oh God, sometimes this world feels very unsafe to us. And sometimes it is quite unsafe. Sometimes our fears are well grounded and they speak to us. May they not immobilize us. May they not take over. May we not live out of fear, but live through it, trusting in your presence. Trusting that you have gifted us with one another to help with our needs so that when our needs are physical we might be met by others who provide healing provide the gifts of sustenance and challenge us anew to be the people who do just that who are your hands and feet doing the work that needs to be done to right the wrongs that we have collectively created and to usher in your kingdom, a place, a time, a way of being that 
reminds us that lives out all people as one because we are all your children. We are all kin. We are all related. Even and perhaps especially those who are different from us. Even and perhaps in particular those who don't get along well with us or even others. Those who are hurting and those who hurt. All your children need your love. And they will most quickly and readily see that in the lives we live if we focus our primary focus, our allegiance, our loyalty, our devotion on you, on your message. If we own the message and make meaning that fills us and propels us. The message that you made sure we heard and made clear to us by walking among us, being as us, being one of us, the one we know as Jesus, who showed us the way, who became the way, who left for us a prayer to bind us together with the generations before and the generations yet to come, a prayer that we pray together now, saying, Our Father, Art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The gifts that we receive are ours for moments until we pass them along. Our time, our talent, and our treasure. So I pray that you will give of all of those. And if you are giving of your treasure, your financial gifts obviously might be received on our online portal. You can use the QR code to get to that portion of our website or here in the plate at the door as you leave. However you give, whatever you give, know the blessing of God in that and the gratitude of the people here who receive that blessing. The creation is, of course, the ultimate gift to us, one that we have not done a great job caring for. And so we pause as is our practice to hear a creation care moment. I thought I'd just share some results today from the National Re Resource Council of Maine's members. They sent out 5,500 surveys to people in the state. They only got about a 10% response rate. But these are the top 10 pressing issues facing Maine today. Uh, number one being climate change, pollution, drought, ocean warming, habitat loss, fossil fuels, development, water quality, land conservation, and PFAs. Um, another question was how members are interacting with Maine Outdoors. 22% are hiking, which is the largest number, bicycling 8%, canoeing, kayaking 17 skiing and snowshoeing 12 camping 9%, birding 12%, sailing and boating 8%, fishing 5%, and hunting 2%. Um, those um, considering investing in solar power, the yes was 51%. And if they're considering investing in community solar was 54%. And how members are saying yes to energy efficiency. If you have a heat pump in your home, the answer is 45%. Solar panels, 26%. And a plug-in vehicle, 14%. So I'd like to see a lot better, but I think overall as a state, we're probably doing better than a lot of places of you know what we consider important and actions we're taking to improve things in our state. Thank you. Um, I see in the, in the chat that Nancy Godfrey added a, a prayer request for her sister as um, she's facing the challenges of chemo. Uh, 
In our announcements today, there were simple reminders of things. On Thursdays, we are gathering and uh, having our, our Zoom fellowship time. We, we are using the book, Braiding Sweetgrass, as our, uh, as our launching point. But if you haven't read it, you are still familiar with the topic from the services on Sunday or just living in the planet. You have ideas and things to share. Your, your presence is a gift if you uh, want to show up on Thursdays using this same Zoom uh, link to be a part of that. Um, I want to uh, point out uh, some gifts that have been offered. Um, where did Jackie go? Is she getting it ready? Was it, she's, uh, that was <laughs> that's one of the gifts. There, no, probably turned the coffee pot on. That, that's what I mean. That's, uh, that was I was going to point out that she stepped up to uh, to offer some uh, some food for fellowship today. So we do have coffee fellowship today. We didn't announce it because we didn't have any takers, and now we do. So. Stick around and enjoy some some goodies and and thank Jackie for that and uh, and thank Sarah Miller for this wonderful wall hanging. Um, she was uh, wanting to offer something for our worship setting that was visual and she was inspired to make this and it's really quite inventive and lovely, isn't it? So uh, um, she's not here today to thank in person. They're off at where is it? Southwest was that where Southwest, Southwest Harbor. Harbor at the. Flamingo parade, so you know. I, I hope they see their flamingos. I'm not sure what's been anyway. <laughs> there, uh, but but when you see her, you thank her for that. That the gifts come from her. Are there um, are there other announcements? Anything that's for the good of the order, as it were? Anything that we should point out, bring up? Thursdays, what time is Thursdays? Oh, Thursdays is at seven. Seven o'clock. So. Um, Well then, what do we have next? Our closing hymn. Thank you. 
strength for today and hope for tomorrow. What great gifts, what great blessings that are ours from our faithful, loving God. May this creator God, the one who knows even the sparrow that falls, lift you on gentle breezes that you might soar with eagles. And may God bless you with the gift of insight, of wisdom, and give glory also to the Christ who comes to you still in the form of the least, the last, and the lost. May the Christ bless you with a gift of tears that you shed with all who weep and give glory to God's Holy Spirit, wild as any wild goose, leading you into those places where you will not go without the chase, without the reason to follow. May God's Spirit bless you with the gift of the foolishness to go on that journey, to go looking, knowing that you will find. And may the love of God be with you all, and all those whom you love, and all those whom none but God loves, now and until that day of God's judgment, when justice will roll down like waters, and peace will blossom among all the peoples. Amen. Thank you.